Most choices, 99% of non-pediatric providers and Medicare would let doctors practice medicine. Not surprisingly, given these three things, what do we get with Medicare for All? Better health outcomes. And that's why I support Medicare for All. Now everybody, the deadline to get those tax returns to the IRS for most people is April 18th, and those living in Maine and Massachusetts have until April 19th. According to the IRS Commissioner Chuck Reddick, by law, there's only a three-year window to claim these refunds, which closes with this year's April tax deadline. So they're pushing for people to file their taxes sooner than later, everybody. And I don't think that's a bad idea. If you guys agree, tell me in the comments down below. So any social security benefit is a welcome sight for most retirees. But there are millions of social security recipients, everybody, that believe they should have a larger benefit boost. And the good, new and the good news is that some lawmakers like Nancy Pelosi and other Democratic peep and other Democrats are working on increasing social security benefits. So convening in a Senate hearing on SI and the Senate Finance Committee, Senator Brown asserted millions of disabled and older Americans are living well below the poverty line, as the program's eligibility rules haven't been updated in decades. Brown said that SSI currently has 7.8 million beneficiaries, including children, individuals with disabilities, and low-income elderly. The average monthly payment in was around $604 for all individuals, with the maximum monthly benefit being $841. Senator Brown shared during the hearing how the SSI Restoration Act that he introduced would, would increase SSI benefit levels to the federal poverty level, cut poverty among SSI beneficiaries in half, and simplify and update the eligibility rules. According to Senator Brown's recent speech, the SSI Restoration Act would raise SSI's sub-poverty level monthly benefits to 100% of the federal poverty level and index them to inflation. This means much bigger checks for SSI recipients. Another important part in the bill is that it would update and index SSI income rules, which have never been updated since the program was signed into law in 1972. These reforms will allow individuals to earn up to $399 a month from working and up to $123 a month in assistance from other sources, including Social Security, veterans, benefits, and pension payments without being subject to a reduction. Senator Brown, along with Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, have recently called for the Biden administration to make historic and much-needed expansions and improvements to the SSI program as part of the Build Back Better bill. The good news is that several key elements of the SI Restoration Act were restored and endorsed by President Biden during the campaign. This means that they would see Congress take big action very soon on this bill. That would help millions of Americans that are financially struggling right now. Now Pelosi is also taking action this week. Nancy Pelosi called on the White House to request double their initial request in new funding for crisis aid after bipartisan negotiators Negotiators recommended allocating just $15.6 billion to fight the ongoing crisis. According to The Hill, President Biden asked Congress for $22.5 billion in new crisis aid as part of the government funding bill, which the White House said would cover immediate needs to avoid disruption to the ongoing crisis response efforts over the next few months. But the funding was later cut down to just $15.6 billion following the GOP opposition. Just last week, Pelosi was forced to scrap the new crisis aid from the government funding bill after members objected to the measure being funded by clawing back state aid from a stimulus law approved last year. But this week, everybody, Nancy Pelosi met with Biden administration officials after which she told reporters even a $22.5 billion proposal would only provide enough relief by early summer before Congress has to approve more stimulus aid. Pelosi then told reporters this week in Congress, I think they should be double what they asked for because even when they were asking for $20 billion, it was only going to get us to June. What I've said is that the administration must ask for more because we need more. So everybody, what are your thoughts on Nancy Pelosi? Do you think she is going to approve more stimulus aid before the end of the year? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 dollars go to administrative costs. What about Medicare? What do they spend on administrative costs? You know, that range is about, you know, three to five, three to five percent. Three to five, funding. three to five percent. About three to five percent. Right here. And if we look at just billing costs, just billing and insurance costs, Medicare is at one percent. Wait, private companies spend 17 times more on administrative costs than Medicare? What are private insurance companies spending on that Medicare is not? Does Medicare spend hundreds of millions of dollars on television advertisements like private insurance does? Dr. Collins? No. 
Does Medicare spend millions of dollars on stock buybacks to shareholders? No. Does Medicare um, spend money on marketing? Private insurance likes to put its name on stadiums and PGA tournaments. Is there a Medicare arena? No. Does Medicare spend $23 million on executive pay like private insurance companies do? No. We know how much it costs to run a high quality health insurance program. One dollar. Out of a hundred dollars, research shows that Medicare spends 1.1% on administrative costs. We spend $4 trillion on health care every year. We could save $200 billion on administrative costs with Medicare for All. And those savings, they could go to expand Medicare. We could spend that money to let patients see dentists. We could let, spend that money to let patients pay for hearing aids, to help older adults afford eyeglasses, to bring down the cost of prescription drugs, to finally pay mental health professionals for the work they do. Instead, all this money is wasted. We're not talking about paying to keep the lights on in operating rooms or improving the quality of care. All this money is used to, to pay big insurance to push paper. It's death by 200 billion paper cuts. Dr. Sachs, what is it about the U.S. market that leads to these sky-high administrative costs? Congresswoman, there is no market. These are local, concentrated providers that have tremendous power to set their prices and to set extraordinary salaries. We should contemplate that the so-called not-for-profits in this country pay their hospital directors five million dollars this is unbelievable and so this is why these costs are why the prices are so high the administrative costs are so high because we don't have a system because we spend 20 percent of our spending just to funnel money between organizations which is something that other countries don't spend dr and sachs i, like I, I say, wanted to I ask like you to we're clipping my time for one second, Dr. Sex. I had to, wanted to ask you specifically about standardization um, and what role that might play in reducing some of this waste that we could reallocate to healthcare costs. Well, when you uh, go in for billing, there is no standardization on anything, on the information technology, on the systems, who's in, who's out, what's going to be reimbursable. Everything is completely opaque. Everything is completely discriminatory depending on who is being involved. So standardization is a big part of all of this because with when you lack standardization, you put in resources to suck out whatever